Good evening, folks. Tonight, we are going to do some nice science. Hopefully, you recall our response to NASA's article, which was quite stern. And then NASA responded, not to me, but to many of you by email, and then, then we were a bit beyond stern. But today, we're going to begin helping to address the physics principles put forth as a debunking idea that the sun controls the atmosphere or that Earth's weakening magnetic field is a problem. We are going to begin with number two, which is going to be remembered as possibly the most incorrect proposition in the history of NASA. They say the magnetic field loss of the planet doesn't matter and the sun doesn't affect the atmosphere because the air isn't ferrous, meaning made of iron. And while they are correct, Earth's atmosphere is not made of iron, that is like a middle school guess on this subject and it is preposterously wrong in the greater picture when asking about magnetic fields and electric currents. It ignores basic electrochemistry and peer-reviewed literature, so let's go to the atmosphere and see what it's made of. This is the basic composition of the atmosphere, and the reason why you can see these values varying depending on the source is that some use dry atmosphere, ignoring water content, some don't. Some who include water include the oxygen in the water molecule in the oxygen category as well, some do not. But in general, this is the atmosphere, so let's go to nitrogen. The number one component of the atmosphere is diamagnetic, which means it is not attracted to magnetic fields. But in fact, even diamagnetic material reacts under the presence of the field, being forced to areas of lower magnetic field strength. This is a well-known aspect of nitrogen gas. This work has been cited 59 times, and that's the largest part of the atmosphere. So we come to oxygen, which is paramagnetic. That means it is definitively attracted to magnetic fields, just like iron. Its force is over 100 times stronger than the magnetic push to diamagnetic material. Between nitrogen and oxygen, you have almost the entire atmosphere. And so we go on to the climate change funding darling, CO2, which is diamagnetic. And it is also well-known science going back years that it moves towards lower field strength. And some have hypothesized an effect on oxygen atoms therefrom. Then, there's the fact that CO2 mixing ratios are affected by joule heating of the total atmospheric column, and that puts both the Sun and Earth's magnetic field into play. We will strengthen that concept in a moment, but first, let's go to water vapor. Water is attracted to electric current, and atmospheric electric circuitry extends from the ionosphere down to the crust and mantle and below. The peer-reviewed literature on air electrification and cloud formation is more than convincing, and this electrophilic activity is the answer to the cosmic ray cloud connection, not cloud condensation nuclei creation, and that also brings us to dust. Dust is a significant portion of the atmosphere along with other tiny aerosols, not significant in their volume, but in their sticking to water vapor molecules to begin forming clouds. Once more, the water and the dust and the electrification of the ambient atmosphere brings the sun, cosmic rays, and Earth's magnetic field into play. And when the atmosphere is bombarded by cosmic rays to levels we humans have difficulty really comprehending, this would be about real time for every inch of the atmosphere, each one breaking out into fantastic cascades. And all of a sudden, it's not hard to see how these juice up lightning as well. And now we're getting to the point of their first physics principle or lack thereof. The idea that the sun only affects the upper reach of the sky and there's too much energetic activity down below for that scant upper forcing. Well, here is where we move from basic electrochemistry to the peer-reviewed literature. And while we can't show thousands of peer-reviewed papers, we really have gone over the best ones in our climate forcing playlist. Here is a very recent, very relevant one that can help and which I'm sure you're not going to see factored into their climate models. The sun controls the thermospheric temperatures and the CO2 forcing they expected to see up there is missing entirely. While they say CO2 heats down here, they say it's supposed to cool up there, and it's because of the same basic physics principles. But if that were the case, the thermospheric up and down with the sunspot cycle would also be trending downward like this. They know the CO2 is getting up there. That's not in question. And so since it's not cooling up there, it really speaks to the extensively published literature on the oversensitivity and bias of climate models to CO2 heating down here. This notion that the sun doesn't affect the total atmosphere, you'd only see that from a climate blog. This is the graphic, by the way, that was made by NASA. I searched for global electric circuit just on nasa.gov 
and found over 200 hits. There are over 3,000 peer-reviewed papers on the global electric circuit, including dozens of them authored by dozens of different NASA scientists. I mentioned in the morning news, when they discovered that Jupiter's atmosphere is eight times hotter than they modeled because of the auroral infrared heating. Only the water coolers at NASA know if anyone there realized what that means for Earth, given that it is currently said to offer next to zero heating here in their models. As for the air not being ferrous, words really don't do justice to the failure of that statement, but hopefully the first half of this video was helpful in showing why. For the second part, showing how the sun and electrodynamics are greater controlling and further reaching than they imagined. That's the pathway to force those molecules in the lower atmosphere. Check out that climate playlist to learn more. We'll see you in the morning for the daily update. Be safe, everyone.